Welcome to another show, I'm Sid and in today's video I'll be going over the RGB shift shader patch in Spark AR Studio which is a program used to create filters for Instagram and Facebook. If you're new to the channel don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment if you enjoyed or found this video useful in any way and subscribe so you can stay notified when I upload new videos. Also I have a playlist of tutorials that you are more than welcome to check out. There's over 50 videos in there so I'm sure there's something that you'll be looking for. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to pause this now and create a new project so we can get straight into the video proper. Uh, let me make this bigger and I'll switch back over to my camera. Hello, nice to see you. Can you tell I'm doing this a bit lazy today? I'm trying to record as many videos as I can uh, so that I can get a couple posts scheduled ready to go. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our rectangle. So we're going to create two of those. And then one foreground and one background, it's pretty standard stuff. How you start most uh, of these videos, <laughs> foreground and background on our layers. We're going to make sure that we've got two layers. And then we're going to come over and make sure that our foreground and background are on the correct layers. And you can control select both, adjust to fill height and width. So we can make this the same size as our screen. And then we'll hit add material for each one. So we'll get a foreground material going and we'll get a background material going. Okay, so next after that, we're gonna go up to our camera and we're gonna hit segmentation and texture extraction and come back down here to foreground. Now we've got these two texture assets down here in our assets panel. We're gonna under foreground, uh, sorry, before that, we're gonna control select both of these and we'll change them to be flat, hopefully. <laughs> and then, oh, I'm experiencing a little bit of lag. Okay, so camera texture and then alpha, you wanna hit person segmentation mask. So we've got texture, camera texture, check the alpha box, texture under that, you want person segmentation mask. So what you've got now is a projection of me cut out from the original uh, video and projected onto this new layer with the background behind me cut out. As you can see, the background itself is a flat neutral color. So I can, if I want, change that. We can have like a green screen or something. But for now, I'm just gonna reduce that to 0% opacity. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to import from AR Library. So under this Add Assets, we're going to import from AR Library, Patch Assets, and then under Shaders, you want to select the RGB Color Shift Shader Patch. And we'll import that into our scene. Hopefully I got the right one. Yep. Okay. So now you want to hit View, Show Hide, Patch Editor. So we've got that down here. And then you're going to drag the RGB Shift into the Patch Editor. So we've got that set here now. Next up, we're going to take our camera texture that we've already used to separate me from the background and we're going to drag that in. So now we end up with a camera texture patch, which we can connect from the RGBA port to the texture input. Now we're going to take our foreground material and we're going to add this texture here, the one we added our camera texture to. We're going to take that and we're going to make a patch out of that and we'll connect these up. So now, as you can see, there's a slight difference when I, you can see a little bit of difference there, but if we now change the amount to be for example, one, you see this is the RGB effect. So what it does is it takes those red, green, and blue color values and just like shifts them very, very slightly off center. So it gives this like nice, I mean, I don't know how to describe it other than that. Like it very much just takes the, the base colors and moves them slightly off center to create this echoey color effect, which you can see in my hands and in part of my clothes and especially in my hair right now. So there's that, that's pretty cool. Uh, if you watched yesterday's video, then you'll know that we worked with some loop animations. So we're gonna do that again. We're gonna add a loop animation patch and a transition, which we're gonna connect up here to our amount. As you can see, immediately we get this little red mark that says the groove of patches contains an error. That's because this transition is currently a vector three. And we're gonna wanna switch that over here to a number. So we'll do that. And now this, this little red uh, mistake, this red error mark has gone. So now we've got our loop animation and our transition connected to this RGB shader and our background tech and our foreground texture. As you can see right now, it's looping through. The duration is one second. So it loops from zero to one over the course of one second and then just restarts. We can mirror that. So it now goes up and back down and it's kind of like, like a heartbeat style, just in, out. Uh, and you can see the, the RGB, the colors themselves moving further and further out of phase. So we can do that. We can even increase this to make it like 7.5. We can adjust this to be like 10. So you can have it extremely pushed out. It really extends those colors further out, creates this like echoey, even your face, it's very echoey face effect. You can see it pushing further out. So that's quite cool. 
we'll bring this back down to five for the time being. There's not much to this, I just wanted to show off the RGB uh, shader patch because it's pretty cool. Another thing you can do is, with these patches, see this little uh, paper clip looking thing? If you click on that, then what it does is opens up the actual uh, patch itself. So you can see all of the things that were made, uh, that, that, were, that go into using it. So it's basically a collection of other patches combined to make this RGB shift patch. So we've got in here things like texture transforms and some 2D transform packs, adds, divides, swizzles, things like that. all these other patches that you can use yourself. Uh, so you can come in here and you can have a look at how it was made. You can even adjust some of these uh, values. So for example, we have the 2D transform packs here. We have three different ones. Um, their pivot points are currently set at 0 0.5. So if we change this one here to one, you can see it already makes slight difference. And if I change it again, you'll see a little bit more. If I come up here and I do the same to this one, say we set it to two, you see it pushes things out even more. If I set this one to a random value, six, you see it creates these very strange effects. So it's definitely worth coming in here and playing around with this. You can do it with quite a few of these patches, especially the, uh, sorry, the, especially the shader patches that are related to color, like uh, and things like that, because you can come in, you can adjust the values and create all kinds of cool effects. Like this is, not exactly shifting in the same way that you'd expect, but it's still creating the nice effect that I like. You can also like back out and undo everything that you've done and go back to just regular. Uh, let's do it with this. And we'll do just some random values. So we'll end up with like, yeah, see something like this, I think is pretty cool. You can even adjust the rotation. So you can change that to be like 45 degree rotation or minus 90, you know, whatever you feel like you create these little like adjustments, create these very unique uh, things. Hold on, if I come back here and I even add this background back in, uh, I'll make the opacity 100 and we can connect that up. Now you'll see what it looks like with everything included together. I kind of like this, I think it's pretty cool. I'll zoom in so you can see it like <laughs> as many ways as possible. But yeah, that is pretty much the entire effect. I'll drag all this together so you can see the patches uh, arranged neatly. But that is basically the entire video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you found this content useful. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment and make sure to subscribe because I'm back making tutorials now. I'm very excited to be here. We're making core cool effects like this. So with all that being said, I'm gonna sign off now and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.